there are lots of other languages features which are not be available in the java per se right so those are being you know somehow try to be addressed but we cannot say the kotlin is a more modern java it has been its own language feature as well it is also statically typed and kotlin can be compiled is end of the day is compiled into a java source bytecode so you can run it as a java programming language if you want to or if you wanted to create a jar file you can create a jar file and you can execute that as well so end of the day the kotlin whatever code you write it executes on jvm so obviously things will get converted into the java source code kotlin also have like an alternative com compiler that is the, it can also compile into the javascript is also and it you know bring in the other language feature and also it's in bring its own features as well so how we can you know create a kotlin application how we can run it so obviously for that we need to have the kotlin sdk kotlin being a language has been created uh near about like 10 plus more years and that particular language has been created by the jprints and Jitwin is the same guys who has been created the particular ID that is there. Okay. And they have you know, created the language version for that and they are maintaining it. So the source file names are basically having the extension dot kt means Kotlin files. Okay. And uh, you can, you know, have like a, like Java C, Kotlin has his own compiler named Kotlin C. So you can compile a Kotlin source file with the programming language saved as a kt source file. And you can include the runtime and you can also create a jar file out of that. Or if you don't want it to include the runtime, you can, you know, just simply put Kotlin C and the file name. It been, you know, converted into the sample dot class name, and you can say put Java sample class path dot wherever the your source file is, and then you can simply put sample to run your normal Java file that is there. And if you wanted to add additional source code or additional dependency jar, you can appeal to that. Kotlin can also be like you have can see the directory name you can mention. It will be outputted into classes and you can mention the class path. So either you can create a jar file out of it or you can directly compile into the source code that is there. Kotlin also can be uh, having like uh, Kotlin C also is there. So you can Kotlin can have another file structure that is a Kotlin script. Right in the Kotlin script, what you can have, right? You can you know compile the source code using Kotlin script. Then you can give the script name and also kind of run as a script as well with the extension of KTS. You can run the Kotlin by integrating the Kotlin uh, SDK into your ID, and it has been also been supported into IntelliJ as well. So normally when you write the Java code or say write a simple hello world kind of a thing, what do you have to write? We have to write public class. We have to wrap everything inside a class. We then put public static void main, then the arguments. Then you put parenthesis, every statement, speed, import statement, variable declaration, expression, or method calling, everything have a semicolon. So in Kotlin language, semicolon is totally optional. It also gives you sensible warning if you are not using some certain variables or something. It also infer the type of your expression values automatically, or else in Kotlin you can define your type name followed by a particular value that is there. Kotlin do support val and var. So var means the normal Java variable and val being the final keyword so it's a constant you cannot change the particular value of that so let's see some example of this before we can go over so example of the kotlin file is that you have like a sample kt 
So here that you don't need to wrap it out in a particular class name. I think it is visible, right? Do you guys want me to increase the font size? Yes, sir. Okay. So basically, you don't require any class file to wrap any kind of main method or functions out here. You can simply put main. You don't have to mention public. Okay. And you can see you don't have to mention semicolon every time and now. Parenthesis is optional. It's only when your function is multi-line. So you can write the same code uh, if you wanted to uh, using equal to. Let's see if you can you know write that or not. So this is also like a valid function statement or syntax that if you like a single line you can put is equal to and you can define your single line function expression okay the functions are basically start with only keyword we can see here is the fun keyword that is indicating it is a function okay now that is your normal Kotlin file that you can write and here you can see the variable right the ARGS so how we define the variable we first define the variable name first and then put a colon then we put the particular type name after that that how it is in Kotlin. and if you wanted to access the variable within a string template so you can put dollar parenthesis and you can define the variable name that is there the value parameter and it will be replaced out here Like here you have like a sample example. Same thing you can write in a KTS file. So it's a, it's a script. You can execute this. Okay. So if I wanted to try to execute this, I uh, let's see if I can you know configure that. Edit the configuration. The program argument. I can say Kotlin. Apply this. Code when you skip KTS already do exist. So let me try to remove one. Okay. Okay. And here I can choose run as a script. And here I put the code. Let's see. Okay. Now if I execute this, let's see whether we can able to see the outcome or not. Okay, so what is the problem it says? It says that, uh, okay, so it actually executed this one. So I have to just configure it correctly. So I'm trying to execute the script key. Okay, and here in the script key, I have to mention the exact program argument. Okay, let me try to do that. So this is the Kotlin script. I try to run it. Let's try to run this again. Okay, so hello Kotlin comes up. So I pass the argument from here by editing the configuration from the ID. So this is my program argument. So based on the program argument, it takes that ARGS. So here also the main method is not also required when you're writing the KTS or script files. So here you can see the hello code in output. And this same thing you can you know run from the command form using Kotlin C script. Just you have to mention that this is like a script. This is not like a normal file and you can have like a whatever value you have to send it as a first argument after that. So you can run the both Kotlin converted into a Java if it is not a script file. And you can you know compile this. Either you can use Java class path to execute that, or you can use the Kotlin C and 
portly just like a java c and java to execute this as well okay now type inference what do you mean by type inference right here you can see right here that greet is a variable but here we have not put anything colon to string correct so if i wanted to put something so by default it becomes that type as string and if we wanted to print out what is the java class it means you know have that so if i can you know execute this so it will say that it is automatically infer the type of this as java lang string so had i been you know change this to any other number so i put it like 10 now what the 10 can be 10 can be a short it can be an integer it can be a long so let's see by default which class it basically inherit to so it basically inherited to as a int right so depending on your expression it's basically determining the type of this particular variable so it is not always necessary to put the type name if you are calling a function you know that what is a function is returning then you don't need to put that particular variable name where you are accepting the value it is not necessary to put colon then the particular type name now while and where is very simple where is something that is there so here if we wanted to do number is equal to five or anything it's like a final i cannot make any changes so if i do this number one is equal to if i say eight and if i wanted to run i'll execute this Okay, so I get an error. What is basically saying is that val cannot be reassigned because it's a final, so I cannot do that. So by default, this is not a possible. But in case of a val that is variable or mutating, so val is basically the value which which we cannot mute it. Val is a particular value that we can mute it, and here it is like a four, then it's like five. So this is allowed. So when I execute that without the error. It's value getting change four to five, etc. Now the string template. So string template is that this person name is whatever Bob. Yes, semicolon is not necessary, so we can remove that. And then if you wanted to use the same name, you can use either colon or parenthesis, or you can simply use the dollar symbol and you can you know print its particular person name. So that means in a string, you can refer multiple variables replacement and uh, it basically is the string template with which you can replace the particular value. And for multi-line string, right, we have seen this feature into Java, right? So for multi-line string, we know that text blocks are present in Java. Similarly, Kotlin has this feature before Java text block is that it need to be have like a three parentheses and then the by default the vertically we have like a separation that is the symbol that we are taking here we can you know do tree margin so if there are any additional spaces that we have put it will trim that particular margin before and after there. And also you can have like a this particular symbol being replaced or you can choose a other symbol with which you can you know put as a separate new line so by default what it does it if i you know print this what will happen this message is created by some person i have delivered it blah, blah, blah. so this particular multi-line is there so how the new line is coming up new line can be come up by the new line symbol or it can have a specific character and those particular margin or additional space before and after that can be trimmed out and the responses will be printed out. Okay, so when I first printed this out, what do you find? This margin, that means these tabs are already there. Okay, along with this particular character. 
so apart from the new line if there is like an additional margin before that if you wanted to trim so normally what method first we call without the trim margin so what happened the sticks as it is got printed it has a new line before it has the margin and the character it is got printed now we have called the trim margin so when the trim margin we call any kind of spaces and the by default this character has been removed now if i change this character to something else if i can push hash out here what happened there So now if I execute this, so for first of all, there is no margin replacement. And second of all, the other two trim margin doesn't work. It is printed as it is. Because by default, pipe symbol is known as a margin separator. So if you give pipe symbol, if you don't give anything, the pipe symbol will be taken and the margin will be removed. That's the default one. Now, if you give something like a pipe symbol, first it can execute. So obviously, the second line 11, it will not trim the margin. And then on the last page, it basically trims the margin because we mentioned what is the margin separator that is there. Now, where we mostly use the text block, we mostly use the text block when you use the JSON payload. Uh, that we wanted to indicate or we use is kind of a SQL statement there we can also use that so the particular text is more readable to us okay next have that expression so uh, before we go to the expression any questions you guys have on these features We have seen that we don't need to put semicolon. We have like a sensible warning if we don't use any kind of variable name we have not used. Type inference is automatically determine the type of the variable based on the expression that you put. Val and var we have understood and string template we have understood. Multiline string and string block along with that trim margin and trim margin we have understood. So what is Codeline also is, uh, you know, stating or giving is it uses expression over the statement. So one of the example is in the Codeline, what you find is there, there is no if ternary operator is there. Okay. So that means I cannot write this particular line like this. I could have easily write in normal Java. Let's see whether this this particular thing get executed or not. Whether this operator is supported? No. So it says that this operator is not supported. Okay. So that's why for this, as this is not supported, the alternative is the if else. And that we basically use for our primary operations. So it's always uh, let you create expression over a if else statement. So you can you know, put in a single line in if else expression rather than if else block. Do require. Okay. The other language feature we can quickly see is the functions, right? So basically, function having like a fun keyword, right? It have the type of the function is again a return type of the function, just like a normal variable, uh, are also be inferred. So by default, if you don't uh, you if anything for example your void function this become unit right and also function can have like default argument and whatever you know value you can pass in a default arguments 
are basically final by default they are final so you cannot change the values of the function using that okay so let's see some example on functions that you can use so far any questions you guys have okay so here we have like a simple grid function here we have mentioned the string and here you have the name of that particular person we pass this particular name and the name has been painted now here what you can see compared to this function definition v2 is that we put as it like a single line function we can put as an expression don't need to put inside a block or return statement similarly this function is returning string uh, there is no need for return statement either so you are not mentioning this as a string this is like an optional correct and even out here if i want i can remove the string and let's see whether that's you know execute this or not and the last function is that there is no return statement so we are not returning anything so by default it is like unit report me okay. but it is we don't need to mention unit or like a void it is optional so you don't need to mention there so i can execute this so so if the particular return type is there we are able to infer the type right when it is like a single uh, expression right But now here they are saying is that why this is not worked, right? Why this is worked and this is not worked. So when you use a block, right, you have to explicitly mention what is the particular return type, right? Otherwise, if we don't mention that, then what is going to be think about that this is like a unit type? And here you are sending a string so then it will get created an error if not able to execute that because it's by default is unit and here you are returning a string so that's why here when you have like a multiple block you have to give the value all the return type just like it is coming at the end just like a function definition then the end of it it's coming okay next is that unit that we have uh, is basically we are not returning anything so there we are not mentioning anything so by default it is unit any question okay now coming to the default or other functions as well okay so here the function is having multiple variables right now here this particular large variable we have given some default value so if the user is not sending anything then the message will be high then followed by the name length of the first argument and that we are passing out here okay so here what happening is is that you can have any number of default value argument and for those particular values if you are not passing anything that value will be getting printed out 
so line number three what we are calling we are calling that particular person name with a particular hello right so then both of the values been overwritten with that value that we are passing line number three but line number four what happened is of course the name then followed by the name length because the second value is already has a particular default value that is there so it is optional to send the value now if i wanted to pass this uh, values in java what i have to do i have to pass them in the proper sequence right so i can only first send the name then we can send the message that is the second argument but in kotlin what you can do instead of giving out the particular order maintaining if we know what are the values we need to pass across we can pass across those values And then we can mention that okay, this message is something this, then the name is something this, right? So then obviously I can pass them in whichever order is helpful for me. And then we can also you know mix this positional argument as well as the named argument. So both combination we can put out here. And if we execute, we see the different values result as per the. Sir, we can pass single parameters also. Yeah, we can pass single parameter. For example, I can also execute. So we can, we need to pass the value for non default parameters as well. So I can, you know, put like this, right? Because the second argument that is MSG is already has a default value. Right. Okay. Okay. And now what he's saying is the positional one that I have how many arguments we have? We have two arguments. I need to send this argument in that particular order. But here you can use the name argument and paste pass the second argument first and the first argument second also. Or you can mix the name and followed by the messages also. So when you assign some value to your argument, this becomes your default argument value function. Okay. So all of these are kind of like a valid way of calling function with default argument as well as your. If we overload a method, then will it not create a problem in this case? Uh, no, uh, you can you can overload the method. Uh, so basically when you're overloading the method right you have to mention those particular arguments in order but here when i'm saying that i'm making a call to the particular functions correct here only when you're talking about the positional and the name is when you're calling the particular function okay so when you use position wise or value wise right so then you can you know pass them in a certain order right and over overloaded function yeah overloaded function you can have like another function right that is is going to take the argument or not take an argument so if i overload this function right you are saying that whether that will create an ambiguity or not yes. so let's just put another function i'm calling the same as a tweet and here I'm only taking name as a string, right? A message I'm making it fix. And I'm putting a name of that particular. Okay. Now here, obviously now it becomes for this particular thing is right, whether it's going to be calling this or it's going to be calling that particular function. Because this is like a having I mean like a default value. Okay. Now, which version has been called? So let me ask put. Yes, we done this. Okay. 
So it's basically for JD is basically called the second version. Okay, because of this version has a particular default value. So it goes for an exact match that is there. And now if I don't put the name per se, right? It also going to this, this particular function. But say I have changed this name to name one. So it is automatically reflected as a name. Now, if I say name colon this, then which version will be called? Then, you, uh, sorry, here I have to change to the name one. Let me now insert. Okay. So when I say name one, then only the first version called because the second version, second method doesn't have the same parameter name as a name one, right? And simply, so that's the it is to resolute this. Now, if I change it, then obviously the second overloaded version will fall out here. Okay. That's how the default argument and the name argument is uh, helping to resolve that particular function that is there. Now comes the VARG R and the spread operator. The VARG R's we know, right? If I need to send multiple arguments, right? What you have to do? A number of arguments. For example, we have a list of. Now list of takes a VARG R. So you can create a list of single element, multiple element, 10 element, or more than that. Okay. Let's see an example for this. How we can, you know, do the VARG R count. So normally what you have to do in a Spring, uh, in a normal Java, right? What you need to do is we basically put the value as variable type, then three dots, and then the normal, normal number or whatever the variable name. Now here, when you need to put the args are, we have to use the keyword args, and that is like a indicate you have like a multiple value, okay? And from this number, it's like a multiple value of int, that the type we have mentioned. So on this, we can call the reduce or other function that we have seen previously on screen. Similarly, we have can call directly this number of, uh, you know, collection collected list of multiple values, we can call reduce. And in the reduce, we are just using if we are saying that if max is my accumulating value, and uh, e if e is still max is still less than e, then return e else we return the max. So we basically try to find out what is the max value. Now with the Varga, the benefit is that I can send the n number of variables. I can send one, two, three, four, five, six. Just I have to use the keyword as a bug out. The next one is basically the spread operator. That is the star, then the variable name. Now the variable name is, can be an array, can be a collection, okay? So if I do this, what happened is, basically it's a collection, right? So from collection, it becomes deconstructed and it becomes a converted into a spread or basically becomes a uh, multiple value of numbers. Okay. And then if you are calling that, then the value will come up. So here the argument or the function value that we get, first one is 2, next one is 11, and third one is 22. Okay. 
So if I just only print the values, and then I am printing this with a speed operator, and let's see how the outcome looks like. The first operations, uh, what is going to printing out? I'm printing out a particular variable that is there, but here what happened is now these things can only be called with the argument supply. So none of the function or the println is taking a vulgars. So I cannot print that vulgars out here. So here it is not taking a vulgar. So I can not use the spread operator when the number is fixed. Okay. Now let me execute this. So now this is what is printed out. It's printed as a number of what is the value is about? Value is basically nothing but an int array. Okay, so it's an object or collection of numbers. If I wanted to say print this out, right, then I can you know print them by looping through this particular number and then print them one by one by one. And say for example, I let me create a function which is a print. And if I put work arts. And I put again numbers of print. And then if I want to say print a length, and if I put numbers, will that print out? See? And here I just simply call it print. Okay. print function. But this is just though we spread it out. But here, what you get in a printing format is that what the value we are printing out is still is a list, but is a collection. But it can be you know iteratable and it can be passing. So here, when you pass it, it basically combine together, but still it becomes a list. But you can deconstruct them and you can put it the help of other you know list of values that are there okay directly you cannot print the numbers here and if i say numbers and then i can do for each right and within the for each i can say number or Number and then I can do the printer. And then I can, you know, able to most probably print the number back. So there I can print out the particular number that is there. So that's about your bar card. And if you wanted to spread this particular operator, then you can use this one. Now, can I use the double quotes out here? That's the double star. Will that work? There will be only single star. Any question on this? No, I know. Okay. So those are the basic features that we're getting extra. And uh, those are also being there into Java, some of them, and some of them are not. So double star means what? Let me see it. 
Tau star is nothing, I'm just checking it out. It's only a single star that is a spread over it. Okay. okay. Now, when you have like the collections, we can have the loop. So we have like a foreign range loop. So foreign range loop does what is as a first syntax is for x in one dot thing. So that particular range you mentioned, and within that you can look to that you can do whatever operation you want to do it. Other is that you create your own range and you can move from a certain value until a certain value that you want to. So this will we will be using instead of your normal for loop where you have to define indexes and etc. There you can have to say a custom step or step down to and you can iterate over a list or any kind of collections. And also you have an option to get the indexes to require. So this is, as you can see, it is like a one dot dot tail. So one dot dot tail means what? It is less than is equal to one and less than is equal to 10. That is the range that is inclusive of this two values okay next one is that you can use x in and then you can use the until so until and the dot range operator what is the difference between this is basically until is reached to the 10 but it's not going to reach to 10 itself it is up to 10 but not crossing that Next one is you use the range operator by default, as you know, uh, as you have already guessed, it's incremented by one. Now, here you can choose to increment by two, three, or other number, right? So, these are all you know equivalent of four loops uh, that we have with the indexes. Now, here we are saying that we're going to go to one in value and we're going to go down to one. Okay, so that is inclusive of 10 to 1. So it's just the opposite to that. What we have always where the value is incrementing from lower to the upper bound. Here we are going to the upper bound to the lower bound. Inclusive both of the bounds. Then down to and then we can use step. And then we can have a list. We know the normal Java foreign kinds of a loop that you can see out here or in names and if i wanted to use indexes then i can use index and i can print out the index and from the name i can also print out the value as well so let me execute this so first we'll be just printing out 1 to 10 inclusive of 10 next one is not printing out the 10 because here it is says that until okay so that excludes the 10 next we have the your normal range with a step so instead of we start with one then three then those kind of numbers with a gap of two similarly now if you go say down to so that is going down, decrementing from a higher value to the lower value. So it will end with one. And then if you use the down to, then it comes down to one, but not, but it will be, you know, down by two values step each. So that's why like a 10, eight, and then one. And next normal, we have like a Java, like for each loop. So you can use the name in names else if you wanted to also print the indexes you can have names colon indexes and the index the indexes becomes a particular val so every kind of index or every kind of you know name that you use with the in class becomes val so you cannot modify them just like a method argument they cannot be modified now you can just do the index and you can have names dot get then the index name that are there that have been printing for the name and the index value as well. So those are the some of the variation with the for loop. Why do you need to use indices? Uh, if I don't use indices, 
uh, yeah. if you don't give indexes it will print it out so sometime you need if you need to have index right so that is another option you can have like indices and from there you can get the index and from the name itself you can call get and as it's a list so you can call the get and then the index you can pass and you can get the value back Now come the when, right? When is uh, similar to a case, but unlike case, is more matching towards the Java pattern matching, right? So we have seen in the modern Java version, we have like a pattern matching that is there. So instead of we need to write instead of operator, we can use the when keyword, right? The when when you say input any. That means I can pass any value. It's like something like a like an object. So you can pass any value that is there. Okay. And when you send any value, what does it happens is that you can pass the different kind of a value numbers, etc. Okay. And here you have different option to use it. So you can either match with a single value. That means one particular case. Then you can put that is one okay and if you wanted to match with the multiple values you can also match that separated by comma at seven and eight it will match seven and eight similarly if you have you wanted to match against the range that you have seen so you can use the in operator and give the explicit range so if it is matching that then we say a particular add an operator and we execute the corresponding code for that and also we can as we are passing anything right we can use is right that's matching whether it's a string or not if it is string then it's checking what is the length of it and if anything is doesn't matches it says it has a default kind of a block right So it has like a pattern matching and you can pass different values here because it takes the in. So you can pass numbers, 7, 8, 16, string value, and then you pass for string builder. We did not want to match with anything. So in that case, it will be just returning nothing. Okay. And here it is like a it has like an auto casting for hello, right? So by default it is being cast to a string. So why are you saying that it is like a auto casting if we can look right? Normally in Java, what will happen is uh with the older version of Java, not the modern one, that we need to first check if it's accepting an object, right? Similar to what we have in any as a method argument. So when you're accepting the object, what happens is when you accept that, what you are doing is we are basically setting okay. Uh, we are setting the particular value, and then we have to check whether it is a type of string or not from the argument. And after that, we have to do the casting of it. That means we can only call the link. After we do a cast, that is cast to a string, and then we can you know call the link function on it. But here, if you say each string, then within the block that follows, it basically the particular variable that we got is, is nothing but a string, and you can you know call the you know any kind of string function on that. So it is not a case, it's just like we can say it's a pattern matching kind of a value. Here we are pattern matching on the different kind of uh, one single parameter that is there. Sir, if we use any other value, then it will break out. Yeah, it will go to the else block and it will say the, it's the default. Like we have passed that uh, string builder, right? So it will not going to match with any of the patterns and then it will print out the default. So else we can think of like a default kind of thing. Okay. So we can use break also, right? 
Now here we don't need to use break or anything because here is less ceremony. You don't have to use parenthesis. You don't have to use semicolon, etc. Right? So that's uh, basically the whole uh, purpose is to you know remove the additional bloating code that is there. That is not actually serving any purposes. Okay. So that's about your win keyword. Okay. So here we can also use the lambda expressions like we have seen with the win, we can have any argument we can pass lambda as a functional reference and we can use the filter map reduce etc that are by default being in a provider okay and before that lambda let's just talk about Let us talk about uh, null type, right? Null type parameters and null type. So let's just go straight to this. So what is the you know, talking about that uh, you can write lambda expressions as you normally can see. So this becomes an expression in lambda function that you can call. So do just take the value at the body of the lambda is nothing but incrementing or doubling it up. That's one. Another thing is the list of values that you can find. It's like an inbuilt function of protein, right? And uh, what is actually written is returns a list. And on that, you can do the near normal operation like filter, map, reduce, flat map if required, and then you are printing it out. So just like Java, you can also use Lambda out here as well. Basically, it builds out the value, and another is basically double the value. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, null types and nullability out here. So normally, um, it is bad practice to send the null value out of your function why is that because um, in the java or programming languages if you pass across the null whoever you know calling the method uh, they have to handle the null pointer exception they have to put an additional catch for that now in java 8 what you have we have optional correct so in case of optional, what you have to do, we have to either put optional empty, if you don't have any value, instead of null, or if you have a value, we can pass optional off or optional nullable off, and you can send the optional back in a certain type. But again, optional is nothing but it's a wrapper. It has that one chip that is is present, and then you can call the get value of that. But then there is, uh, it's totally depending on the developer or the particular programming code who is using this particular function. So in that case, what happens is if you are putting a null, there is no point of restricting that within the language itself. So here in totally what it says that you can not send out null so whenever you give a particular return type uh, and that particular return type indicates that you cannot set null value so that restricts that and also the caller function also knows that that this particular function will be returning me always a not null value so we can stop on the null value kits and we can focus on the main issue of main, main code of that particular function 
now here our data type along with your parameters are also going to be not malleable along with val or final now to provide a null support uh, what they have provided you can have like the same type that you have out here is can be defined as a string or it can be defined as a string question mark okay so what happened is you are you know passing a particular value name and from the name you are checking whether the name is equal to is equal to something then you are returning a value otherwise you are returning a null so if i wanted to only set this Will this code run even? Will this code even compile? No, this code is not going to compile because if the expected value is itself is a not null value. So you can have like a string, so you have to pass a string, I'll even if empty, but you cannot send out a null variable value that is conveyed. So if I need to send null or if I wanted to say or accept any value that can be nullable, then what I have to do, I have to put a question mark against the same data type, indicating that I can send or accept a particular null value or a null data type. Then only and then I can send out the null value. Okay. Now, if I run this particular code, so first one is printed a particular value, next one is printed a null. So now, in that case, what happened is here we got the null. So either I have to handle it. So let's see how we can, you know, handle null out here if we. Receiving a null sum. Okay. So these are the receiver, right? So one receiver is a receiving string, which is of string type, which can be nullable. And then we are just checking whether the name is not is equal to null. By default, this check is not re only required because here. We have put the question mark still put. If we have not able to set the only string, then this particular if null check is totally redundant. That is not required. Okay. Then we can have that we can type string is in the string length. Otherwise, we have string like null value, then we have string string a size as zero so default value we are passing now next one is also having null now when you have a null so how we can you know directly use that particular vector so this is like a null safety operator so what is does it if on any kind of a nullable variable we put question mark colon if that is not null, then the length value will be printed out. If it is null, then the link call is not going to be called. So basically, it will not result in a null pointer exception. Then if it's a null value, null value will be passed. Okay. So why why there is a question mark after length? Yeah, I'm coming to that. So for example, say I am uh, accessing a SQL API and that particular SQL API is uh, detailing me about a detail about a user's student object okay now the user student object can be a member of an organization and it can be a member of a class right so what may have happened that the student classes are currently here enrolled only into the organization or the school school but he has not 
you know enroll into any classes okay now if i wanted to access currently the class is null so if i wanted to access the null value what happened is i'm going to say student dot class dot id right it's actually normally going to be accessing that so instead of you know, putting student dot class dot id or class id in the case then it will cause a null pointer exception so in case of that if you are expecting the student class is kind of like a nullable value so for better to that what you can put that is in a student dot question in dot that is a null safety operator then classes then question dot uh, again an LCP operator on the class and then after that you have like ID okay so now at the end what happened your class is null right your student is not null so it written the student object now after that you have like a course object the course object is a null so then it's not going to be calling the ID on top of that it returns a simply null but we don't want it to send the null value back to the front end, right? So other alternative is to capture that particular value and then, you know, preparing a null value that is there. So how can we do that? So for that, we have another operator. This is known as a Elvis operator. So here, it look like a ternary operator, but it doesn't have a space in between. It has a question mark and then a colon. So on the left hand side, if it's a null, then the right hand side will print it out. So somehow if the, we are passing their null, then it will be printing out zero. So the same thing, right? The same thing that we have in the first uh, field of line, right? What we did is we now in a condense it using null safety operator. Instead of checking for null, we're going to use the null safety operator. And then we're going to be calling the dot length function. And for else part, we have a else div operator and printing out the zero part. So you have understood this. What is this two operators are doing? Null safety and address operator. Sir, in line number 11, that question mark and that colon is the uh, LV operator, right? Yes. And question mark and dot is basically your null safety operator. OK. So now if I execute this, what happened is there will be no normal value though at this for the first two functions. If it is null is passed, it's sent out as a zero that you can see in the output. Now both of the results are identical, but with these two operators, it's much more single line. The line of code are now reduced, single line. And the non safety is also being checked. If you have understood this, then we can move to the next section. Let's go to the functional start. Okay, the next section is the extension method. Okay, so what are extension methods? So here is an example. 
so these are function which can be added to any types that are there be it your custom java type uh, custom you know class type or whatever or it's a built-in type the string is a built-in type now here in the string we are adding another method named shout okay so this is like like you know, not the default methods or existing library method of the string that code library provides. No. So as a user, if you want, you can add additional extended methods, and the same extended methods can have a, like an expression or a logic, like a single line or a multiple line, and you can you know call this particular function as if the function was there as a part of the library itself. So now if I you know call this method, which is not previously there, but it is very easy to add, just you mention a function. Just instead of that, uh, here you have to, okay, two upper classes, uh, upper case is deprecated, it is a version, so we need to use some lower case version, let's use that. It says uh, duplicated, so you are using the lower case version. Now, what is saying that south unit is defined? Uh, okay, now what is the problem is saying with this? Is error overlaying resolution ambiguity? Okay because unresolved reference to the string uppercase what is the uppercase that we are calling okay so there is like ambiguity that is here because it can be matched with anything in the println and that is the problem they are saying it is overloaded resolution problem is here okay so let's see how we can have a look like this. Okay. Now let us take another variable. Okay. Upper case. And here we go. Hello. And we put a shout. But then again, I think we'll be encountered an error method because here when it's going to the shout says the error function okay so i think we can use that but here it will again fail yeah so if i give it a type Okay. So it's now have a problem with what is the unresolved reference to a case. And if I put string for this. Okay, so let's see what is the string method we have. Directly, it doesn't have it. So, what you can do instead of you know having that something to uppercase. Also, they are saying both of the method is actually duplicated. Okay, so when he's trying to use the uppercase, is saying that it's duplicated, and any other thing we can use or lowercase or anything. We can use the uppercase method. Okay, fine. 
So let's try to run this. So now we're able to run this properly. So the two uppercase was deprecated in place of the replacement method that we have is that only the uppercase, right? Now I can remove this also. I don't need this. And also now can I use shout directly here? See if it holds me any ambiguity error or not. Okay, so it doesn't. So we'll use the correct version or current method name uh, that is currently not deprecated, right? So it is basically string uppercase. You can use without the string. So shout method or you know, or we can you know better name it like as a upper, right? And then we can use it on any string literal or a variable. So this way we can you know create another extension method that is not there so that is automatically you can add to any type either your own or your custom types as well okay so any other questions on this extension methods Now let's go into the classes, the object oriented part of the Kotlin object. Okay. Uh, so let me quickly check out the time. I think we have crossed the time over. So what you can do, we can have more uh, object oriented part as the next session, right? And then also we and have another session on core routine or the concurrency part of the Kotlin as well. Okay, so let us cover those two in a separate session along with the Kotlin object orientation, remaining part of it, and the separate session on Kotlin core routine, similar to what we have on the micro. Let me stop my sharing and pause the recording.